Okay guys, we are going to take a quick brief break from this. You can see the welder out. Um, and I'm making a video here. I promise my next video would be the cutworm. Cutworm wants to flake the roof of pearl. And if anybody doesn't know what pearl is, pearl's is little VW bug. Okay? It wants to know how I did it. So, I'm going to pause this for a second and I'm going to get some stuff. Okay guys. Here are some of the guns right here. This is what I used. Like I said, um, you guys are going to use probably siphon feed. But this right here is the Devilbus JJ502. And as I have written up there, so I always remember this has a 1.3 tip in it. And here's the way I seal up my guns when I'm done because you never know when I'm going to use them again. Keep spiders from going in there. Okay, so we have that. And we have. This is the MGB 501. Okay, these guns spray pretty much identical, except this one does not have a separate area for the air. So this piece right here by my finger does multi phases. Okay, multi stages, as opposed to this one has separate for the air. This has a 2.0 tip in it. Okay, um, I do have other guns set up there. We also have this. Which, believe it or not, is the same as the MGB right here. Okay, let me hang that back up. Okay, now, this is how I did it. Uh, you could do it differently. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. It seems like if you keep the process consistent, you can't really go wrong. But then again, okay, I used a small gun. The 1.3 tip and I shot a base coat down okay now a lot of guys that do flake work will shoot a base coat of like black down um, it's all gonna depend on how much flake you want okay I shot gold down I'm trying to think of the color I can't think of what the color was so I shot three coats of Deltron gold down as a base and the gold that I chose already had a lot of metallic in it Okay, so I did that with the 1.3 tip, so now you get your base coat on. Then I bought an intercoat. Okay, some people use clear, some people use an intercoat. I had bought an intercoat. And in the intercoat, I used the gun with the 2mm uh, tip, and I used my... Got it up in here somewhere, right back there. My agitator cup. Okay, so that thing's constantly agitating. Okay, and keeping the uh, flake suspended. How much flake you put in there um, depends on what you want. If you don't, if you want a heavy flake on your car, but you don't put a lot of flake in the mixture, you're going to be putting a lot of coats on to get it to cover. If you want a lot of flake, you got to put a lot of flake in there. If you don't want a lot of flake, then don't put a lot of flake. I mean, that sounds silly, but that's reality. Um, I went with a lot of flake. I'll show you the flake in a second. I put three full wet coats of flake onto the car. With this gun, with the agitator cup. Okay. And the flake I used is right here. Here's some of it. I know I've thrown a container out. Okay. I used 15,000 hex. So that means the flake is getting everywhere already. It's already some on the scoop. Um, that means instead of the flake being cut in a square, it's cut in a hexagon. Okay, that was 15 thousandths by 15 thousandths. Okay, that's obviously the size. Then, um, hexagon flake at 4 thousandths. That's very small stuff. Okay. Um, what color I chose, I could have sworn. When I looked at these, they all look to be the same color, even though some one's light, one's dark, and one's brilliant dark. Well, two brilliant dark and one's light. But, um, I went with a majority of the 15 thousandths and then a minority, if you want to word it like that, of the 4 thousandths. If you counted the pieces that actually went in, they were probably close. But obviously, 4 thousandths doesn't cover as much. I wanted to make sure that everything had a cover on there. And by doing the two different sizes, that's why when you walk by my car in the sunlight, everything dances. Okay? The reason I went with the hexagonal flake 
this flake was normally square by them cutting it in a hexagon okay you have less chance of the point of the corner sticking up out of the clear that's one of the advantages so even though it's a rectangle if it's cut like that and that's sticking up when you go to sand it you're gonna sand it off if this is already off and it's standing up you have a better chance of not hitting it okay plus it gives a different type of um, reflection now when people talk about bass boats and dune buggies that's a 25 thousandths flake now for a 25 thousandths flake you need a minimum of a 2.3 tip okay the reason I didn't go that big was I wanted to put a little bit of that in there it's just the amount of clear that's required to go on it now here's the pros and cons I chose gold flake over a gold base do you see the gold base I don't think so um, but by going with a colored flake rather than a silver flake some people do everything in silver then they start they put an intercoat over it then they start masking different things off and they use different color candies and that's the way you see the paint jobs with all the different colors but it all had flake in it there weren't different color flakes all the flake was silver they just put different color candies on it I did not want to put a candy on top of it so when you look at mine and you see the yellowish gold that's all the flake the drawback to doing a colored flake like gold or green or red anything other than silver is these flakes are coated they start off as silver then they're coated so when you do your initial spray okay I did three coats of the clear uh, three coats of the flake okay and a total of five coats of clear on there okay when I let that set up overnight the cost still looked like sandpaper then I blocked it down with the 600 now here's what the problem is if you break through because you don't have enough clear on there and you hit this where you hit it it's gonna turn silver okay so as you sanding and you break through all the flake that you hit are going to be silver so if you chose gold or you chose red you can have silver mixed in there it might only be standing straight up it might be on a slight angle you don't know how it's going to be so it'll mess with the color um that's why a lot of people shoot silver flake and put a candy over it because then they do the flake they um do the candy then they start laying the clear on okay um, this way if they break through it's not as dramatic or a lot of people will do the silver flake lay the clear on do the initial sanding then they lay the candy on right and then after the candy they put their flow coats of clear on there now after I wet sand in mine I put three more coats of clear on it never broke through so there's more than enough to block this car out again and wheel it which I would really like to do um, but other than that it's like doing a regular paint job so forget about you put your base coat on say it's black it doesn't matter so now I got my gun with my flake in there and the flakes all suspended just do your normal 50% overlap okay and when you step back the intercoat will make it like dull okay the intercoat really doesn't have a shine in the coat is like a binder that's what like paints made out of the main part of paint okay um, dries pretty quick then once you put the clear on and that that's when everything starts to come alive um we are going to do something on this scoop without a doubt okay that scoop's going to be a project all on its own what we're going to do we're not sure yet but uh i think what we're going to do is just a regular candy job okay if you remember uh 10 from the wet wet already supplied us with the so bright silver base coat uh we already have the clear we just need to pick a candy so I know he wanted to do his candy, possibly candy apple red, the scoop. So if you want to get a little more crazy, you could pick whatever color you choose. Um, so you can get something in the red family and mix it in with, say, your first coat of clear after the candy. And then you shy away from that and you go straight clear. And then you'll be burying that down in there and it'll give you a different illusion. You'll start to see a little sparkles in there. A lot of things you could do and play around with. Is it hard? No. Is it time consuming? Yes. Yes, the time consuming is that you're stacking a lot of paint on there. You gotta wait in between. And after you 
do the initial clear you have to let it sit at least overnight if not two days block it and then flow it out one more time and once you flow it out again then it looks like money but um, the key is after you block it and they even talked about this so say you put the four or five coats on all right, which is I think the maximum recommended you let it dry two days the second you break it open with the 600 paper because that's what you're gonna go at you'll start to smell the chemicals and what's good is you let it breathe and that keeps you from getting uh, like solvent pop it actually breathes out because you skinned it over you put all that material in there and then skinned it and it like gets trapped in there by doing that it allows it to breathe then you recoat it again um, what was I gonna say? So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Can you handle it? No, you can handle it without a problem. Would the bug look cool? Of course it would look cool. Any bug looks cool, with or without metal flake on it. Um So I guess that's about it. I think I covered it all. Uh like I said, you don't have to use a siphon fiend gun. Oh, the other thing I wanted to cover was if you go to say Harbor Freight and you pick yourself up a cheap siphon fee gun and it's got like a one four tip in it you can actually drill that tip out you don't go crazy you just step it up one size if that you get yourself the really nice small drill bits and you could step that baby up to the one eight or whatever is required and still have it spray normal you just got to be careful because if you get too crazy on it the needle won't seat in it and it'll also spray like garbage so these these Devilbus guns have pretty nice tips and they flow out and they atomize really nice. That's why I still have them. Well, that's why I regard them and I like them. And I'll be truthful with you. Out of the two guns, this is the gun that people seem to favor. That's what they're always talking about. This is my favorite. This gun sprays better. Like I said, the spray part is exactly the same. It's just the way the air comes out. And not with the Harbor Freight thing on there. So I don't regulate anything here. So that's just these are just pressure gauges so I could see. Um so with that said, I think the video is long enough. Tomorrow uh not tomorrow, tomorrow's Tuesday, Wednesday, this door's coming off. Um I started to patch it, then I realized that was an error. Um I want to go with a big patch. I'm going to go with a really big patch where I know no water runs at all. And we're going to bend the lip and come around the back side. And the bottom of the door right there needs some attention on the back side. So we're going to we're gonna conquer this so I know it'll get many years out of it before I start to see problems. So if I leave that patch small, water's going to seep through the weld no matter how good I do it. And it's going to blister again. So we're going to make this patch much bigger than is required. Um... I'm probably not going to bend it around the back because it's the metal's very clean there. But I'm going to go close to it and I'm going to remove a decent distance. I'm going to say probably eight inches long at least and probably come up to like here. So maybe come up like five inches and I'm going to put the bend on the bottom. And uh, with that, the water can run around it all at once. It's going to take a long time to come back through. So we'll prep it and prime it and coat it in the back inside and we'll see how it goes. So, uh, okay guys, I think I rambled long enough. Looking at this gold flake is making me miss the wagon. <laughs>